will be uh, Tim Parrott. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it, so I'm going to do it for him. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what I want to talk about today that uh, Mr. Parrott is involved with is uh, a business in using uh, these decommissioned tanks and growing paddlefish fingerlings and then using those to be able to stock municipal um, watersheds and uh, water supply lakes as uh, some of the other talks have all talked about. This is actually putting it into practice. Uh, this is Tim Parrott. He uh, owns Aquila International. Uh, he developed a business where he would actually harvest freshwater mussels from the Ohio River. He would then cut uh, the shells up and eventually make them into beads or nuclei, which then were sold to the uh, pearl industry, which then were used as implants. Unfortunately, that uh, industry crashed at shortly after 9-11. Uh, also, there was a great um, um, competition within the Chinese market to capture this market that was uh, only done in North America at one point and then uh, switched over to China. So uh, he came to me about 2004 saying that he wanted to stay somehow into fisheries, aquaculture, and we started talking about some ideas. However, uh, we deal with a lot of limited resource farmers, and he was one of them. He didn't have land. He didn't really have any capital. Um, and as you know, getting into aquaculture can be expensive. So uh, we talked about some ideas that we were kind of throwing around at that point among ourselves and research. And um, I had a good friend that went to church with and still is a friend, Bob Other. He's in the corner there. And he took a course from us at, at KSU back in 2001, Principles of Aquaculture. And several years after that, he started calling me saying, you should see the amount of daphnia that's being produced in our clarifier tank. Um, and probably like you all, I was like, who wants to go to a sewer plant? And that's kind of uh, how we left it. Well, in 2005, when Tim came and I called Bob and I said, Let's kind of look at this. What, what is there to be offered at, at the Frankfurt sewer plant? And uh, uh, he started showing us the sludge thickener tank, the digester tanks that Dr. Cuevas just spoke of. Uh, we saw the daphnia, and for years I tried to culture our own daphnia to feed paddlefish. And if you ever try to call, cultivate uh, daphnia, it's quite difficult. Here, after 20 years of being in Frankfurt, I didn't realize I had a perfect culture of Daphnia. There was nothing else besides Daphnia that was being produced in these clarified tanks. Also, Frankfurt is one of the few wastewater treatment plants in the United States that's using ozone, which is an interesting disinfectant uh, because not only will it do a total disinfectant, but also it provides oxygen. So we had this very oxygen-rich water, very clean water, and later on, uh, Dr. Cuevas has done a lot of uh, work showing how it actually can uh, uh, break these chemicals that we know as uh, EDCs, endocrine disruptor chemicals, and other chemicals that are not safe for humans to uh, consume, uh, actually can break these compounds down and make them safe. So uh, we had the best of everything, so we are very appreciative to Bob. and. Uh, <clears throat> he, he, we started that process. Anyhow, to switch, another idea that we were talking about from 1999 until uh, about that time was reservoir ranching, talking to the state, trying to get things going, and it was very, very difficult every way we went. Uh, but this was more of a way we felt to produce caviar. Forrest Wynn just talked about trying to produce caviar in catfish ponds. Never thought it was a good idea, though a farmer wanted to try it, so we did it. But uh, we feel this is a much better way of producing caviar using uh, a large body of water to grow these fish up. And so this is another idea that we talked about. And you've seen the same thing. It's a low-risk, uh, non-polluting, sustainable type system using young fish, fish that are usually uh, what we call phase two, about 200 gram fish, stocked in the water. You wait eight to 10 years. The fish mature. You come back and harvest them. So uh, a very simple, low-risk system. And, and then with the change in regulations in 2006, it was perfect timing for 
uh, Tim to look at trying to do these two different types of things, working with decommissioned sewer plants and reservoir ranching to grow paddle fish in large enough numbers to be able to stock them. So he was quite good at Googling. He loves to Google and loves to search and find. And he was looking and looking for every sewer plant and every reservoir that would fit within the description we were talking about. In particular, looking for wastewater treatment plants that were building new plants uh, closely associated with the old plant. Therefore, you could use the effluent water from the new plant to use for the decommissioned plant. There are some plants that are built four or five miles away, so you can't use that water. So he, he specifically was looking for places that had old plants. Uh, Winchester uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant, uh, which is uh, this one on the uh, right here. Let's see, it's hard to see it that way. I'm sorry, this is not Winchester after all. This is actually another plant called London, uh, London, Kentucky. Yes, we have London, Versailles, Kentucky, all those, Paris, but uh, this is London, Kentucky. And uh, this was another place that he found, but this was the new pl part of the plant, this is the old part of the plant. Uh, and then some reservoirs, and you heard uh, Zach Martin today maybe talking about Linville and Wood Creek. Those are all lakes that uh, he was able to find. So the first year, I was very uncertain that this would even work. I really thought we'd put the fry in there and the next day it would be dead. Or I, I really just didn't believe in this whole system. But we went ahead and did it. And uh, he had a, um, an agreement with the sewer plant. He was paying a lease of $1,500 a year to lease uh, these tanks. We were associated with it to do uh, observations and, and collect data in order to do those things. And so these are some of the digester tanks uh, we were able to, uh, this is a crane that goes 26 feet down. The bottom of this tank is 26 feet, so this tank is half again down underground. So we were um, harvesting fish, putting them into a, um, a uh, stock watering tank and lowering it down, filling it up with paddlefish and bringing them out and harvesting. That was our first uh, thing that we did. And we were able to produce 15,000 fish. Been there for 20 some years, never produced that many fish at our little facility. So this was exciting for us to see commercial level of fish could be produced at, at a place like uh, a sewer plant. Uh, the first two lakes that were stocked was about 350 hectare of lake in 2006. Just that alone, if you look at uh, three pounds of eggs per female, a survival rate of 50% females stocking at 20 fish to the acre. So in other words, you end up with five female fish, three pounds of eggs, that's 15 pounds at, whole, at retail prices of $300, all these things, adding the meat into it, you, you see an economic impact about $4 million. So that got uh, Tim quite excited about just some of these predictions we had, finding this kind of water and uh, having the fish that uh, were available to do that. So he continued his search and he found a place in Winchester, which is only about 45 minutes from Frankfurt. Frankfurt is the capital, if you didn't know, and that's where we're located. And about 45 minutes away is, is Winchester. And uh, this is the old facility. And in 2007, they were just starting construction of the new facility. <clears throat> what we had there were lagoon ponds uh, this is in 2010 they pumped them out and they started to clean them out and uh, two years later now we're using them as uh, fish ponds they are rather deep ponds so we we bought uh, uh, 10 horsepower paddle wheels instead of five horsepower paddle wheels these are only two acre ponds so we we got extra horsepower to make sure we get good circulation from top to bottom in these deeper ponds. Also, uh, what we found in 2010 were all these old facilities and after an agreement uh, Tim was able to work out with them, he was able to form a lease in 2010 for $200 a month. He could lease that place, which was three two-acre ponds, five hundred thousand acre five one hundred thousand acre tank or hundred thousand gallon tanks and six fifteen thousand gallon tanks okay 
So quite a large facility for $200 a month. This is somebody that doesn't own land, really doesn't have uh, capital to do it, but this is showing uh, with $200 a month you could uh, really start an op aquaculture operation. This is Tim uh, feeding fish. Uh, besides, uh, I know we're talking about paddlefish, but we also are raising hybrid striped bass because we want to see, uh, we feel you have to have some diversity of the fish farm in Kentucky besides just paddlefish, or you may have to have other species. So we're also looking at hybrid striped bass. There's Paul Holden. Um, we got him up to about a pound and a quarter this past uh, winter before we went into uh, winter time. So hoping to get him up to market by the end of June. Paddlefish uh, here, you can feed, feed it on the surface as well. So this is the, the new plant now. Uh, they um, have about 8 million gallons a day of effluent water and they agree to pump it into these ponds. These are the three ponds that are now renovated to be used for fish uh, culture. They did keep one of them for their own use. And then those are the RBC tanks and the two clarifier tanks uh, there that are now going to be able to be used. Uh, since then, using these facilities, he's been able to stock up to 900 hectares of water supply lakes and the first harvest is scheduled for around 2014-2015. It should be around nine years old at that time. Uh, that would be the earliest and uh, you heard of extra virgin oil, uh, olive oil. So we think we may call this extra virgin caviar or something, you know, the first uh, laying down of these eggs by these females. You always get more price for that, right, every time I see extra virgin something. Uh, is Dr. Scoopt in the room? I hope not. Yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> it is dangerous for a biologist to talk about economics, but I, I guess I just wanted to throw out some numbers. He is going to give a talk about this and, and really give you some, a lot better numbers, but these are some numbers that Tim is trying to show that uh, you know, he's spending two hundred dollars a month. Been doing that for the last two years. Um, just this past summer was the first summer to be able to raise some fish. Uh, he did have to put some money in for electric, and we also got a grant to help further uh, put some electric in. What happened is that a lot of these decommissioned plants have the electric, but this particular plant, before they agreed to let us use it, they ripped all the copper out and you know uh, recycled it. Uh, so if you could get to one of these places before they did that, it would be a big saving. But otherwise, we still had, we had put about a total of $30,000 in. Electric, so far, running uh, two ponds and six tanks. Had this in the heat of the summer was about $600 a month is, is what it was uh, costing. Aeration, these are paddle wheels. We also had a grant to help supply these paddle wheels for now. But the idea is uh, money is being made. He will then replace those paddle wheels uh, as his own property. Uh, leasing the water supply lakes. He doesn't really have anything that he has to pay them up front. He has to supply the fish to them. He then has worked out an agreement to uh, pay back 10, or, I'm sorry, 20% of the wholesale price of the caviar and the meat. So uh, at the end of the time of harvest, that's when he would have to then pay them. So that's another thing. So nine years, he doesn't have to pay him for the lease of that water or the use of that water. He sees other, other things. Probably you have to have several boats, trucks, uh, gill nets, um, leasing processing facility or having your own processing facility for the caviar meat, these sort of things. And he's estimated that to be about another $100,000. Um, to be able to do um, the, the caviar processing and the meat production. Um, and Renee Corner is doing a very similar thing, and she'll talk about her thing next. Um, well, are you, maybe you aren't going to talk much about that, but some of it. Uh, so, uh, so we have at least two people that are kind of using these concepts, and they're growing fish, and hopefully they'll be making money soon. So... Any questions? Yeah, time Can for one question. 